हेलो चिल्ड्रन आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड चैप्टर नंबर वन रैशनल नंबर्स वेल यू मस्ट हैव कंप्लीटेड ऑल्सो द होमवर्क क्वेश्चंस असाइन टू यू इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स नाउ एट द एंड ऑफ दिस लेक्चर नंबर फोर आई विल डिस्कस द होमवर्क सॉल्यूशंस ऑफ द प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑल्सो कमिंग टू लेक्चर नंबर फोर ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स क्लास एट चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स स्क्वायर्स एंड स्क्वायर रूट्स डियर चिल्ड्रन एज द नेम इंडिकेट्स स्क्वायर्स एंड इन योर प्रीवियस क्लासेस यू मस्ट हैव लर्न द एरिया ऑफ स्क्वायर दैट इज इक्वल टू साइड इन टू साइड दैट इज साइड स्क्वायर सो वी कैन से दैट स्क्वायर ऑफ अ नंबर इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ अ नंबर बाय इट्स For example, if I take number one, its square will be one into one. That is one. Two, two. The square of two is two into two. That is four. Another number can be taken as three. That square of that number three is three into three. That is nine. Similarly, you can find out the square of all the numbers. So, what is the square? What is the square of a number? It is the product of a number by itself if i am multiplying the same number by itself then i will be getting the square of that particular number simple as this now coming to square numbers what do you mean by square numbers any natural number p which can be represented as y square where y is a natural number then p is called square number now what does it mean i told you in the previous slide that if i am taking the square of 2 that will be 4 so here 2 is your natural number and 4 is your square number likewise 2 square is equal to 4 3 square is equal to 9 or we can alternate take it as uh, like this also 4 is equal to 2 square 9 is equal to 3 square 16 is equal to 4 square it is one and the same thing so here 2 3 and 4 are the natural numbers and 4 9 16 are the respective square numbers so such types of numbers are known as square numbers or perfect squares i am repeating it it means square numbers what are square numbers if i am taking any natural number and i am squaring that natural number the result so obtained will be your square number for example 4 is equal to 2 square or 2 square is equal to 4 it is one and the same thing 9 is equal to 3 square 16 is equal to 4 square so here 2 3 4 are the natural numbers and 4 9 and 16 are the respective square numbers so such types of numbers are known as square numbers or perfect squares now the question comes in your mind how we will come to know that whether a given number is a perfect square or not or it is a square number or not now to find out whether the given number is a perfect square or not we need to do the prime factorization of that particular number for example i am i have taken two examples here let us take 16 now the prime factorization of 16 after the prime factorization of 16 the prime factors of 16 will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 it means 16 can be expressed as the product of equal prime factors here 2 is repeating four times so 16 can be expressed is expressed as the product of equal prime factors equal 2 into 2 that is making one pair 2 into 2 another 2 into 2 that is making another pair so as the definition also indicates a perfect square can also always be expressed as the product of pairs of equal prime factors the numbers should be present in pairs and it should be a prime factorization and it should be equal so three pro, uh, three things should be there it should be prime factors prime factors it should be present in pairs equal pairs that's it it should be the product of the numbers now taking another example prime factorization of 48 here if i do the prime factorization of 48 the factors will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 now here in this case 2 into 2 this 
is a, com a complete pair. Again, 2 into 2, this is again a complete pair, but 3 is left unpaired. So, we can say that 48 is not a perfect square. It means 48 cannot be expressed as the product of equal prime factors. So, 48 is not a perfect square. So, to find out whether a given number is a perfect square or not, we need to do the prime factorization of the number. If that particular number can be expressed as the product of pairs of equal prime factors, then we can uh, easily say that that particular number is a perfect square. Now, coming to the properties of square numbers. The very first property is a number ending in 2, 3, 7 or 8 is never a perfect square. It means if a number is given to you and that particular number ends in 2, 3, 7 or 8 at its unit place is never a perfect square. For example, 152, 1028, 6593 etc. It means the first very first number is 152. It uh, it has 2 in its unit place. 1028 it has 8 in its unit place. 6593 it has 3 in its unit place. So all these numbers are not a perfect square or you can verify that also by taking the prime factorization of these numbers. You will come to know that these are not perfect squares. Now, second uh, property of square number is a number ending in an odd number of zeros cannot be a perfect square. It means if the number of zeros present at the unit place or present at the end of a particular number, then if it is odd, then it will not be a perfect square. For example, 10, 1000, 9 lakh. So, here the number of zeros are odd in number. So, it is not a perfect square. Next comes square of even numbers are even. It means if I am squaring an even number, the answer will be even. Uh, for example, 2 square that is even. So, 2 square is equal to 4. Another example can be 4 square that is equal to 16. So, it is again even. So, square of even numbers are even. Next property, square of odd numbers are odd. If I am squaring any odd number that is 5 square, it will be 25 which is again an odd number. 9 square is equal to 81 which is again an odd number. So, so far the properties which we have learnt are, first one, a number ending in 2, 3, 7 or 8 is never a perfect square. Second, a number ending in an odd number of zeros cannot be a perfect square. Third, square of even numbers are even. Fourth one is square of odd numbers are odd. I hope all these properties you have understood because all these are very easy ones. Now, coming to fifth property. If a number has 1 or 9 in its unit place, then its square ends in 1. It means if a number has 1 or 9 at its unit place, then if I am doing the square of that particular number, I will be getting uh, 1 at the uh, at its unit place, at the answer of the unit's place. For example, 1 square is 1, 9 square is 81. 9 square is 81, here 1 is definitely at the unit place. So, it is this property only, if a number has 1 or 9 in its unit place, then its square ends in 1. Another example can be 11 square that is equal to 121 again. So, 1 is at its unit place. The square, uh, 1 is at the unit place of the square of that particular number. Now, 6 properties, if a number has 4 or 6 in its unit place, then its square ends in 6. For example, 4 square if I will be taking, it will be 16. 6 square is 36. So, you must have observed that if a number has 6 or 4 in the unit place, then its square will also be having 6 at its unit place. Seventh property is, if a number has 2 or 8 in its unit place, then its square ends in 8, sorry, in 4. For example, 2 square that is 4, 8 square that is 64. So, both these are, the both these squares have 4 it at its unit unit place. Now, 8th is, if a number has 3 or 7 in its unit place, then its square ends in 9. It is quite obvious, if you take 3 square, that will be 9. 7 square is 49. Both the squares have 9 at its unit place. 
so the properties fifth one is if a number has one or nine in its unit place then its square ends in one if a number has four or six in its unit place then its square ends in six if a number has two or eight in its unit place then its square ends in four if a number has three or seven in its unit place then its square ends in nine now coming to the ninth property if a number has 5 in its unit place units place then its square ends in 5 and if you will be squaring 5 that will be 25 definitely 5 is uh, at the units place of the square of 5 25 square that is again 625 so here also 5 is at the unit place of the square of that particular number next is if a number has 0 in its units place then its square ends in 0 obviously if a number has 0 like 10 square you are doing then it will be 100 likewise you can do the squares of the numbers having 0 at its unit place and the squares of those particular numbers will end in 0 i hope all these properties are very much clear to you now on the basis of this simple concept like squares squares and properties of squares uh, perfect squares or square numbers i am assigning you the homework from exercise 6.1 question number one second part question number two first part third part question number three third part in your homework notebook and i am assigning your homework from your ncrt book only next uh, uh, few questions are to be done in the book also like complete question number four five and six in the ncrt book in these simple questions in these questions which are to be done in the book only the observe uh, you are supposed to observe the pattern and just complete those patterns in your book you will be able to easily do it and question number one two and three all these questions are definitely based on the concepts which i have covered in this lecture okay now coming to homework solutions of the lecture 3 that is previous lecture in which we were uh, i gave you the homework from chapter number 1 that is rational numbers now question number 8 is 8 by 9 the multiplicative inverse of minus 1 1 over 8 why or why not here in this uh, question you need to tell whether 8 by 9 is the multiplicative inverse of minus 1 1 over 8 so first of all you should know what is multiplicative inverse multiplicative inverse one is known as the multiplicative inverse identity and if i am uh, multiplying a rational number by uh, the reciprocal of that rational number then answer should be one here in this question we will be using the same concept for example um, the product the concept uses the product of a rational number with its multiplicative inverse is one multiplicative inverse means the reciprocal of a given rational number so minus one one over eight can be written as minus nine over eight now multiplying this eight by nine which is given in the question we need to verify whether it is the multiplicative inverse of this minus one one over eight so we need to multiply this eight by nine by the uh, given rational number that will be equal to minus 1 which is not equal to 1 because we want the answer as 1 only then it will be the multiplicative inverse so 8 by 9 is not the multiplicative inverse of minus 1 1 over 8 now next question from exercise 1.2 question number 1 represent these numbers on the number line uh, this also we have discussed in the previous lecture so uh, let us have a look at this question now minus 5 over 6 lies between 0 and minus 1 so as we have see, we know that on the number line uh, to the left of 0 negative natural numbers are there and to the right of 0 we need to take the positive natural numbers so minus as it is a negative rational number so it will lie to the right of 0 and it will lie between 0 and minus 1 so we need to divide the line segment between 0 and minus 1 into 6 equal parts because 6 here is the denominator and we have discussed that the denominator indicates in how many equal parts I need to divide a particular unit and 5 minus 5 indicates that how many parts are to be considered numerator of a rational number indicates how many parts are to be considered and denominator indicates that in how many parts i need to divide a particular unit so on the basis of that concept we have made a number line 0 minus 1 over 6 minus 2 over 6 minus 3 over 6 minus 4 over 6 minus 5 over 6 
and minus 6 over 6 as it is a negative rational number so we need to move to the left hand side of 0 and 0 to minus 1 we need to make this uh, rational number or represent this rational number like minus 5 over 6 now next question is find 10 rational numbers between minus 2 by 5 and 1 by 2 as we have discussed earlier that to find n number of rational numbers we need to make either the two rational numbers equivalent or if they have di uh, different denominators first of all we need to make the denominator same and multiply it by one more than the number of rational numbers required either of these two concepts you can use to find out the 10 rational numbers or n number of rational numbers between two given rational numbers so we need to make the denominator same first either you just take the LCM or you just multiply first rational number is minus 2 by 5 that is equal to minus 2 into 2 or over 5 into 2 that will be minus 4 over 10 here we have multiplied both numerator and denominator by 2 now to uh, make the denominator 10 of the second rational number 1 by 2 I need to multiply numerator and denominator both by 5 so I will be getting minus 4 by 10 and 5 by 10 are the two rational numbers between which I need to find out required or 10 rational numbers. Now there are 9 rational numbers if you will be uh, writing the rational numbers between minus 4 by 10 and 5 by 10 there will be 9 rational numbers which you can easily write down but we need 10 so again I need to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number here I have multiplied minus 4 by 10 and 5 by 10 with the same number that is 2 numerator and denominator both should be multiplied of both the rational numbers so after multiplication I got minus 8 by 20 and 10 over 20 so we can easily find out now 10 rational numbers between minus 2 by 5 and 1 by 2 which can be written like this it will be minus 7 over 20 minus 6 over 20 minus 5 over 20 minus 4 over 20 likewise you can write 10 rational numbers between the given rational numbers now coming to next question number 5 find 5 rational numbers between minus 3 by 2 and 5 by 3 here again I need to make their LCM same uh, denominator same so I need to multiply minus 3 by 2 by 3 numerator and denominator both so it will be minus 9 over 6 and 5 by 3 is to be multiplied by 2 uh, numerator as well as denominator it will be 10 over 6 now we can easily find out 5 rational numbers between minus 3 by 2 and 5 by 3 that can be written like this I hope all these questions are very much clear to you and the chapter which we have started that is chapter number 6 squares and square roots all these uh, concepts must be clear to you and on the basis of that please do complete your homework in your uh, homework notebook from your NCRT book. Thank you.